Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. So who are you all? Hello. Hi, Words Butter. <laughs> Very cool. Where are you all from? Oh, we're we're from Los Angeles. But I'm I'm from the Valley in Burbank. Nice. Yeah, so we're we're based in LA, I guess. Uh, I'm from South America, from Colombia. Johnny is all the way from New England. I'm kidding. Uh, no, that's correct. I mean, it is kind of correct. It's so vague. He's not kidding. He is from. I don't, know. I don't want to say where you're from. That's crazy. You I I grew up in Boston. Nobody likes to say Boston besides say people from I Boston. Hear your city again. <laughs> For interested parties, I grew up in a little town called Sherburn in the Boston suburbs. Cool. <laughs> so, can you tell me a little bit about your band? Um, yeah, we're we're a tri- indie rock based trio with funk influence. Um, we, me and Diego, I'm Britta. Diego, we started the band in, and it feels like so long ago now, but we started in, back in Hollywood, and then. 2014 i guess and then johnny recruited 2008 it's it's so hard to tell now at this point but um we've just been playing in la for for the last five years it's been hard with the pandemic but yeah so can you talk about that a little bit like why it's been hard with the pandemic because there are no shows (laughs) um this was even hard because we couldn't get together so we couldn't create music together either because we like to get together and actually i'll start a bass for a song and then we'll play in a room together and work it out so we couldn't do that for a whole year it seemed a year and a half so you would you wouldn't make you didn't make music for a whole year i mean i i wrote some songs and we did we released like one or two songs during the pandemic but we was like remotely created you know, yeah, we so, did the classic Zoom thing of like having everybody record separately and then stitching the video yeah, together yeah. and yeah. stuff I like took that. The, the task of mixing and mastering it. Um, I've like only been a TA for like audio production in certain schools. So I like roll XLRs pretty fast and know what a board is. That's it. Uh, it was terrible. By the end of it, I hated the two songs. It was they're online still. They're, it's Tattoo Fish and then Can't Find the Words. Those are the names of the songs. The mixes are terrible. The mixes are terrible. The songs are pretty good. Uh, Yeah, I feel like I messed up the songs. I thought they sounded lovely. Yeah, no, that's good. That's I think you you get it, PG. Like that whole like you know you mix something, you've been like get that tunnel vision, and then it's like oh man, this is terrible because you've heard it so long. Uh, But it was interesting, you know. We like and I respect the mixers that we hire like more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude, thank you. You're great. Uh, Yeah. So you all dropped an EP before the pandemic. We dropped, I guess, well, we had an EP come during the pandemic. It was May 2020 is when that It Was Not Feeling Human was released. But it was just that during it was 2020. So we didn't really get to do like a proper release, we felt like. And there was just so much happening at that time. And there were so many movements going on during the summer of 2020 that we thought, let's just focus on the, the, the Black Lives Matter movement was like really, really like coming out at that time. So we thought, let's just. Focus it was on just this. An Let's interesting not put our time. Like, I was pushing a lot of the marketing for like that EP. Like I did like an EPK for us and everything, and um, people like especially the pandemic also like softened, softened a lot of people's hearts. So like we got in t- contact with Duale and like all these bigger magazines, uh, and like I thought they were never gonna respond, and I just wrote a heartfelt email being like, oh we're this local band like trying to pr- like you know self like promote our stuff, and the owner of Duale responded and he was like, dude like. We're gonna do a full on like full scale release for y'all. Uh, he sent me like the templates that like we had to like send their marketing team, and then it was just me like trying to do the templates. Like, oh my god, this is crazy. Um, we started getting that plan going, and th- we did the very first stage where a bunch of people got an email blast being like, "It's Butter is doing an online release, so you could buy like a ticket on Eventbrite, and they would like give you like the music for free and like music videos, just like a whole thing." Uh, and then Brianna Taylor's thing like happened like two days after. And then after that, I didn't hear from him. And I completely respect it because yeah, they just lie. completely took a turn of like, this is way more important. Um, and like, I'm not saying like, oh, like it like sucks for us because it obviously sucked way more for like, um, like obviously the entire like community. Um, so I don't know, it was just an interesting time because we like tried putting the stuff out, but then we were like, yeah, this is clearly not the time to like push like our thing. Um, so now we have like that EP that's like really good, but it's just like sitting there. It, it, it really is a fantastic EP. And I guess it's, it's a shame that it hasn't 
got right. more recognition yeah, no. that it needed. Exactly. Well, now it's getting more yeah. push yeah, on now, TikTok yeah. because <laughs> now I st- after the pandemic, even though I should have been doing it during the pandemic, we finally, I just got accustomed to TikTok recently. And since these songs aren't out yet that we are going to, we have new songs we're finally releasing after two years um, coming out this summer. But since I haven't had any way to promote that, I just started promoting our old songs. And now finally on TikTok, people are starting to blow up kind of in a way like listening to our music we actually got over 500 monthly listeners in a span of two days recently just be off of posting our old stuff so that was kind of encouraging and some people even people said that oh i wish that we have found that yeah so it's cool she's they crushing found the tiktok us. live game, i'm crushing tiktok that's a big part of this to <laughs> be humble about it but i am so you're gonna be releasing an ep soon right not or- eps more just singles yeah. you know what's interesting is i have kind of noticed that people instead of doing EPs and albums more so it's like they'll drop singles but it will be an era so they'll maybe have three to five songs that could have been a mini EP but then instead they'll drop them as single by single after like month by month and that seems to all fit as an era as an EP and then they'll move on so I kind of thought of this as being an era of three songs that we're releasing definitely mm-hmm. do you want to do you want to talk about some of the songs that you're going to be that you're, that you're releasing then yeah. We have our song, um, called I Don't Want to Go to Work, <laughs> if that already gives you the taste of what the theme is. And then we have another song that called... That from, like, TikTok, right? I, I wrote a song. I, I started writing a post on TikTok, and then people, were, they started responding to it. So I finished the song, and then... Never recorded it. Now we finally got it recorded. It just yeah. took and way longer. Yes. So yeah. that's what... In the, but that's the... It's kind of just the theme of not wanting to work your day job being an artist and not wanting to just even not even just being an artist just if you don't if you hate your job you work a customer service or a nine to five job that sucks it's like kind of like hating on the big corporations that take all the huge parts of the paycheck and then you feel like you're not making anything and that's what our other song we have a song called baby steps and it kind of has the same theme as i don't want to go to work so i thought this could be the era of songs about that relate to people who are not digging their jobs right now because i'm not digging my job right now (laughs) Well, me? I'm sorry. I do feel you. I, well, I like my job here, but <laughs> <laughs> um, so on the topic of money, you all have some pretty great merch. Um, I have an it's butter lighter. Um, I I'll get that for the camera. One of twenty, I think, right? Yes, one of twenty. One of twenty. All the way, like from Mexico. It's from a company that makes they make special lighters for cowboys. But a friend of ours, his cousin part owns the company so in a break he said dude just print out 20 lighters they made it and they're there <laughs> but yeah that's like I, i'm so glad you have one dude oh i love this lighter um can you talk about your other merch too i think yeah. uh, i think a lot of it has been designed by so early early on when before johnny was in the band um we did i got sponsored by the symbol company called Soultone, and we did a live session with them and from there this like little girl just like fell in love with us and started drawing. She was really talented and started drawing a lot of stuff for us. So first time she hit us up, she hit us up with at least like nine designs of t-shirts. And she also set up a T public store for us and was like, here's your store. Like there's a bunch of merch for you guys. So we also have merch on T public if anybody wants to buy. And there's a bunch of crazy designs. And, but usually like 90% of our art comes from her if it's not pictures. It's all limited too, right? It's, yes. Yeah, like all of the, um, because like, we have hats and shirts and stuff that we'll have at our shows bes- besides Tee Public and it's all like a limited edition. Like once we do a color, we do two colors of hats, we'll do two different colors next time. So if you want a certain color of a shirt and shirt or right. a certain, like we've done black little tiny logo it's better shirts and then we've done larger ones but we've only done one run of that so if you don't get a merch run i mean a merch i mean something from there then like you probably won't get it you know because we're only doing one run <laughs> yeah there's a lot of stuff that like we don't own like i don't have a lighter to it i'm like oh dude it's cool to see the lighter again um because it's like it just like disappears but it's like it's good because it like that makes it sell a little bit faster people like realize we tell them like this is not going to come back and it's not like we're like the classic, like this is not gonna come back and it comes back in six months. No, it's like, like it we're will, really we just not gonna do it. Mm-hmm. Part of it because we're, like me and Britt are also stoners so we're just like, you know, like we're not gonna get shit done all the time. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> I, I get shit done. <laughs> so you mentioned that you'll be dropping three singles. You've talked about two of them. Can you talk about the last one? 
Well, I said a little bit about Baby Steps because we have a song called Baby Steps and I Don't Want to Go to Work and those are both coincide with like the um, the theme of hating your job or like hating having to go to your nine to five and like just wanting to like quit. Love, right? Then we then we have another one that's coming out, but it's called Ruining Love and it's just it's a completely different topic. Um, we are playing that one yeah, yeah. today, though, but um, it's literally I think it's still fun to talk about because it's literally just about when you are so in love with someone and then they break up with you and then you're like, oh, I'm never going to be in love again because they, they just ruined the idea of ever being in love ever again. I'm, I don't know if anyone ever ever felt that way, but I definitely have fucking felt that way. <laughs> it fits ironically with the corporate theme, though, because there's a Taco Bell plug in the lyrics. Oh yeah, I do oh, taco, like talk out. about Taco Bell in the song, so it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It all it's all a theme. Oh, <laughs> all right, thank you. <laughs>